Oh, baby, everybody. And we are back. Welcome back to Words with Wayman. I'm your host, as always, Matt Wayman. Uh, welcome to a nice little part two with St. Louis comedian, actor, improver. He does it all. Mr. Ray Williams, thank you for coming out. Yep, no problem, man. Good to be here. We left out in the first part. We, um, I think I got through one question on the first the whole podcast, but it's great. Did, I, did we? Oh, oh, sorry, was, man. No, but it went to a lot of cool stuff that we were talking about. We talked a lot about improv. We talked about comedy and how it worked. I just want to start off this one because um, you do scripts. You do a lot of stuff. How do you write what you need to write? Do you like switch it up? You do scripts in the morning, comedy in the evening? Or- Ooh, I'm a morning. Uh, I watch this John Cleese thing. Uh, that and I read a book called War of Art with Stephen Pressfield, which I love. I recommend it to any creative person. Yeah. Like and it just talks about like having a sacred space and a sacred time. So I try to I can't write late by the time my late at night rolls around, my head is muddled with all the bullshit and traffic mm-hmm. and people that piss me off and like day stuff. Just like Yeah, stuff. I like to just like get a nice caffeine buzz going. Not too early, eight nine in the morning, right till about eleven or noon, and then let it sit. Yeah. How do uh, you? Cause, so you work a day job too? Sometimes you work. Yeah, I mean, I work right? a bar job, so yeah. like Tuesdays and Thursdays I work. So those days I don't get to write. Mm-hmm. I'll sneak off, and that's when I do promotional work. <laughs> I try to take a day of like email and club managers, yeah. or trying to handle that side of my career, career. Stuff. business bullshit, the yeah. business side of comedy. And then five days a week, I try to write. And then if I'm on a deadline, clearly, sometimes I'll write all day. Mm-hmm. If you just if you feel it flowing. Yeah, if I feel it or if, <laughs> usually it's because there's a deadline. Necessity. Then I'm like, no. Uh, they, I told them I'd have this by 3 o'clock, and it's just me, like, slogging away on Celtics free. Still yeah. use the free Celtics. I haven't, yeah. haven't updated the final draft yet. I heard it's something I need to do. I, got, I, I work on Celtics, too, and I like it. I think I paid like 20 bucks for it on Apple or something. Yeah, it's not bad. It's great. It's what you need, and it does the job. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's see. What um, I guess this is a decent one to get into. It. What, uh, what's, your, what's your goal in comedy? Like, where do you see the end of this? Because, mm. I mean, you're doing a bunch. You're doing sketch. You were yeah. working with STL Up Late for a while, which is a late-night show here in St. Louis. Yeah, that was great. That was a great experience. Um, I don't know. Like, I always feel I, – I mean, I guess the Everest goal is just – of course, the Everest goal is, like, do ten stand up specials. Be the and, biggest comedian in the world. Right. Or at least just carve out your piece of the pie I and be say like, it's yeah. like it's winning comedy. Is what winning like people comedy. Think the yeah. goal is is like defeating comedy. Right. So I mean you gotta have that. Because I want it to be something that's not really attainable that you're working for. Mm-hmm. So you'll continue to work hard. But I think honestly, man, I'm the type of person like I remember thinking like if I made it to S N L like I didn't see that as a stepping stone. Mm-hmm. I saw that as like, cool. The end all be all. I'll yeah. be Keenan. Uh, I'll do that for 10 years. I don't yeah. have a problem with that. Uh, now, I may, that's one of those things you might get there and have a completely different opinion once the re- it becomes a reality. Mm-hmm. You're like, no, this is great, but there is more I want to do. Yeah, I was doing like weekly shows with Daryl Hammond down in New Orleans after that, you yeah. know, after he was on like SNL. Right. He was doing like shows to 15 people. That's crazy. Yeah, his book is amazing. You yeah. So oh, I've not. It's a good. Yeah, he talks about like his struggles with like mental illness and things mm-hmm. like that, and like having to make it. Which it's great that SNL has been so supportive. They have him back now. He took yeah. Don Pardo's job. Uh, I still think he's the best. Trump. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alec Baldwin gets those hits, brothers. <laughs> Alec Baldwin uh, is the most famous, not great Trump impression. Yeah, I think. Like, you're it's, absolutely right. That one dude's got a career now. He's making. Uh, he's on Comedy Central, mm-hmm. the President Show. I haven't watched it yet, okay. but like he's great. Uh, so there are people doing a lot of Trump stuff. But I, I, yeah. I don't know, man. My goal is just to not have to do anything else. Yeah, to be able to make the living off comedy and not to uh, to make money support family and be able to help people that have helped me it would be nice to to have enough money not to worry about money mm-hmm. how many kids you got i got one kid one i got kid. one grandkid, grandkid which means i'm probably gonna stop at one kid yeah done uh unless you know maybe a do- like if i got to that point where i had like angelina jolie money maybe Just i'll adopt start adopting kids 
What's up? What's going on in this kid's life? Yeah, I'm gonna take care of this kid. I got the money. I got the money. I got the money for a nanny and some help because I don't. I can't go all in. I'm not gonna raise him, but I will pay for a school. Nanny I will. I'll, I'll help raise him. I'll pop in. I'll go to little league games. I just. I can't. What? How do you feel like help, having a child has helped your comedy? Mm. Or hurt it? I guess really. I mean, I don't know how you look at it. Yeah, I definitely not hurt it. I just life experience. Like I wasn't yeah. a. I was a young dad. I, there's stuff I regret. Um, like, I wish, you know, like, I didn't know how to be a dad at that age. I didn't know how to be a parent. Uh, just screwed a lot of stuff up. But I think that makes good fodder for now. Mm -hmm. Like, you actually have something to talk about. The comedy and tragedy to. are intertwined. Yep. So it's like. And my son and I have a decent relationship now. We're good, but like... You have a lot of comics. I mean, they're, you know, 20, 25-year-old kids that start out, you know, male or female. I mean, they just don't have that much life experience. So you actually have things to talk about. Yeah, that, that would be... I guess that's the trade-off. Like, when I talk to festival organizers and they're like, well, this, is, this business is very ageist, you know, and you're... You look young. You play young. Well, that's their jargon. Yeah. You play young. Uh but, you know, and they're like, you know, what's people want to see their own demographic on TV. And I'm like, I get it, man. But the thing I have that, you know, a 21 year old comic doesn't have is I have a, a deeper well of experience and fuck ups and yeah, actual stories. Yeah. And maybe like a little bit of character growth that's already happened. So, yeah, I, you know, I talk I have a different uh, platform, I think, than like 21 year old comics have. I think you're completely different. I mean, that's the thing. It's tough to compare, but when it comes to those festivals, they have to compare comics just like do, based yeah. off each other, which is the tough part. But I mean, even that you're being considered for these festival or festivals out of uh, working out of St. Louis is big. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good. I'd like to think that it that it's changed, man. Like, yeah. the gatekeepers are they're there, but they're different. It's not. We talked about it earlier off. You know, off the show, like that '80s mentality of like, yeah. I only do stand up, and I'm gonna do stand up, and I'm gonna get my feature, then I'm gonna headline, yeah, then I'm gonna get years, Jay yeah. Leno, and then I get my development deal. Like they don't do that anymore. And improv same way. It's not like you don't go to Second City, do the cruise ship. Lauren Michael shows up one night, and who's this Chris Farley fellow? You know, it's like they look at an. Un it's an unfortunate part of the business sometimes, man, because I hate social media sometimes. Yeah. But it's like. They look at your body of work and be like, what have you been doing to grow your career that can also benefit us when we give you this platform? How many but, followers do you have? Yeah, are you yeah. bringing anyone to us? You know, Tom Middleditch is a good example of that. Like, he had a huge presence on social media, which made him an easier bet, you know, to, to develop shows on HBO mm -hmm. and things like that. And he was an improviser at I.O. And, yeah, there's like, I mean, there's people that it's even when you get those festivals and stuff, and they're like, okay, we like you now. What do you have? What is your body? Yeah. What do you have? And then people are like, what? I'm like, funny. I'm, I just did a great stand up set. And they're like, yeah, but what can I, sure. do you have? How many pilots do you have? How many? Yeah, and I think that it's, I like to think, and I could be, there may be an inevitable jump to LA or New York mm -hmm. or Chicago. When even Chicago is like, you eventually have to move out of there. And I, you have friends in Denver mm -hmm. headlining off nights and went to LA and couldn't get stage time. And like, that's a thing. And I believe in your 10,000 hours and getting as much stage time as you can. And I'm like, you can get that. You can develop. If you work to build a scene with other people that give a shit and care, you can build a good quality incubator to get that experience you need so you're ready when you make that move. Mm -hmm. And some people, you know, you can make with YouTube and CISO and Hulu and Netflix and it used to be there's 10 stand-up specials a year on HBO yeah. and you're competing with Chris Rock and George Carlin and it's like, good luck. Yeah. Becoming one of those nine people that's getting a special. But now it's like Netflix, there's what, 50 a year? Probably yeah. more than that. Yeah, and some people think it's it's helping comedy and I think it absolutely is helping comedy. And some people will say the opposite, that it's hurting comedy because they're just throwing so much content out there that people aren't caring about it anymore. Well, it's like the housing. You know, everyone's yeah. afraid it's a bubble that's going to burst. And it may. It happened in the 80s. But like right now... Might as well get in the market, you know. Yeah, get, I think <laughs> buy even some when real I estate. Started, it was different when I started like seven years ago. It was mm -hmm. a different, complete scene. Like we were, like one of my buddies took me on tour for the first time, and like it was like there was not that many just indie tours going around. And now it seems like every week comics are on the road and going th coming through town and just getting out sure. there. Yeah, I think that it's a business where you can be self-made a little bit, and like the gate. It's just not you don't have to wait for 
uh, the gatekeeper to open the gate and say, yeah. all right, you've done what we need you to do. Now you've written for I Love Lucy for 66 years. 66 years, and now you're a staff writer on King of Queens, and now mm-hmm. we will allow you to shoot a pilot mm-hmm. for us. It's like there's so many channels. They're looking for identity, you know, and I know it sucks talking about the business side of comedy, but if you have a good acumen for that, mm-hmm. you can find opportunities like – you know, people shit on HGTV, but I'm like, they have a platform. They have people know what they're going to see. HGTV, somebody's fixing up a house or yeah. buying a house, and that's what I want to watch right now. <clears throat> you know, and like so many channels are struggling for brand identity. That you know, they're looking for programming, they're looking mm. for ideas and shows, but it's like you have to be funny and be able to position yourself to like get yeah. in front of those people there's those guys out of denver that run that um, those who can't on true tv you know three headliners that were in denver they're called the growlix but you know they made it happen now they're all living out in la and they're on the second season of their show but they made it all happen yeah, from denver so changing the model a little bit same thing dudes from philly uh that were rec regulars at the philly philly helium you know they just shot a pilot i mean there's you have a camera sitting in this room with us right mm. now uh my friend Josh has a Black Magic, which we shot our show on. Like they're expensive, but like those things are affordable now. Like yeah. you can go out and make stuff. It won't be good. Mm, it isn't all going to be good. Be good. <laughs> <clears throat> but go out and make it, and like you don't have to wait for someone else to be like. We that's love the best it. part, and that's why I think St. Louis is pretty collaborative. See, and I feel like Denver was super, super collaborative. But having these people that I can call up and be like, "Hey, come over and act on this thing real quick," and they're like, "Yeah, sure." Right. That's like the toughest part of it all. Absolutely. Uh, or creating a way to just do it for yourself, even by yourself. Um, I ask this question every time on the podcast. Five years from now, best case scenario, what would your life look like? Mm, five years from now, best case scenario. If everything nope. went perfect. Maintain the level of gray hair that I have now. Yeah, which is not too much to look great. Not too much. It's just got a little a little, little salt, a little table salt. <laughs> a little salt with that um, in five years, I think it would be, God, how old will I be? I think at that point, Best case scenario, I've got a writing job somewhere for someone, probably. Best case scenario, that's transitioning into some sort of platform where I can tell the stories that I want to tell. Uh, I'm able to support myself and my family on comedy, and I'm still able to go out and tour. And uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a stadium tour, uh, mm-hmm. but if I could go out and you know, be headlining and drawing a regular crowd and be yeah. able to kind of like work material uh, the way I want to do it. I think that'd be best case. And maybe, maybe SNL. Yeah. I think, you know, the thing, yeah, just need a little TV credit to just yeah. it or a movie. It's that catch 22, man. Like, yeah. You're funny. But we need a TV credit. You could I'm like, crush a room I'm like yeah. nobody else, but the guy that doesn't even do that well is going to pack that room out. It's the difference right. between 1500 bucks and 5Gs. Right, 100%. It's crazy. That's part of it, yeah. That one guest spot on King of Queens. Yeah, and that's what people – I mean, that's the world we live in. Like, it's the medium you work in. It's like, I know you from. I know that dude from. Yeah. So we trust him. Right. And, you know, and you got guys like, I think Ben Bailey's made a good career. There. Yeah, I'm Cash like, Cab, man. Cash Cab. And he's a funny dude. Yeah. But, like, without Cash Cab. Nobody. I don't know if Ben Bailey sells out. I don't know if he headlines and sells so. out. And he's fully capable. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, so he found a way to be like, I used to be a cab driver. Uh, let's play this game on this little reality show. Oh, he used show. to be a cab driver? That's yeah. a stick? Uh. You know, I, as far as I know, or maybe yeah. I just made that up. Maybe no. they're so good. I bet he had his license still. He renewed it one more year, and they're like, yeah. let's do this, baby. So, yeah, that's cool. It's a know. great show, too. I mean, yeah, the, you have to figure out your way to position yourself in the right way to headline shows, and you have to have that credit. Because, right. I mean, the clubs want to make money, and that's the thing. There's so many more clubs, but they still need to make money. Yeah, I mean, they're supportive. Like, your home club's always good to you, but at the end of the day, like, they can only keep their doors open. Yeah, they don't. I mean, it's a business deal. It should. I mean, you mm-hmm. understand the business. I think a lot more than a lot of people do, which I think is good for you and your career because right. you get it. And I mean, you put that de- that work in and working on the career. Right. It's not fun. That part of it's never fun. As fun as just like hanging out and yeah, having fun. But you got to get good at it because if you don't learn to like handle that part of your career, one you'll get fucked mm. <laughs> a million times over if you don't know how to like conduct the process where it's time to get paid or it's time to be like to bill someone out there's so many times on these corporate things that that i'm like you get paid in stakes yeah or or 
or just you don't realize that you're a tax write off for these, you know, and like so grossly underbid yourself. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you can be like, yeah, you want me to do your Christmas party? Okay, fifteen hundred bucks. And thinking they'll be like, nice try, buddy. How about five hundred? And you'd be happy as a clam to get the five hundred. Yeah. And they don't even put up a fight. They're like fifteen hundred. Cool. See you Saturday. <laughs> And you're just like, I can't believe they fell for it, you know. And it's like, it may not even be good, yeah. But they're gonna write me a check either way. And they uh, it. And so yeah, man, you just figure out ways to piece together a living mm-hmm. doing it, you know. What uh, before we get out of here? What advice would you have for like young comics? Like if if you somebody gave you a piece of advice, but when you started, what would you want Ooh. somebody to tell you? Um, a lot of people say don't do it. This one must be. <laughs> yeah, I. You know what? Yeah. I talked. I'll never forget. I talked to a dude. I was in Carbondale and I was young and I was hungry, but like, there's no blueprint for this. It's like, you want to be an accountant. There's a map. You can be like, Oh, you go to state school and you get a degree in accounting and then you go get your CPA and then you work for a company and you start your own business. You know, if you want to be a plumber, you become an apprentice and you do it. But it's like, if you want to be a comedian, it's like, good luck. We don't know either. And the people that do know, don't want to tell you, uh, and I talked to a guy that did stand up and like, he's like, you know, his advice was like, yeah, well, get ready for good luck, kid. Get ready to just get your ass handed to you. And people that don't appreciate, like he was just bitter and pissed. And yeah. I'm like, thanks. It was scary and like made me feel like shitty. And I was like, I'll never do that. Yeah. To somebody. I'll never be that to other people. So the only thing I would say is like the Bill Hicks uh, what's well, like learn to be yourself on stage and you yeah. know, have supply and demand covered which is because nobody hard. else knows how to be you because like everyone starts out telling those jokes that anyone could tell yeah like he's Norm McDonald he's going after Louie right uh, and then you can tell people are doing impressions of the comics that they like mm-hmm. you know like somebody's doing like really shocking things and, and has a weird delivery and they're, I'm, they're like can you give me notes on my set and I'm my note was, do you like Anthony Jeselnik? Yeah. Like, He's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like, because you sound just like him. It yeah. sounds like you, you just like rearranged his material. And I was we like, call him Anthony Jeselnik. Yeah, what we call right. Him. Anthony Jezel Elbow. Um, so the only advice I would have for young comics men is, write, talk about your life, whatever it is. Learn to talk about your life, and that'll help you find your voice quicker. And the most important thing I think is be you have to fail in this business that's part of it but you can minimize the amount of times that you have to fail in front of an audience if you're willing to do the homework off stage so like record your sets especially early on you don't have to do as much later on Mm -hmm. unless there's something that you always record them because you might say something on stage in a moment and you're like oh shit that was funny and you'll forget I mean, I worked with Michelle Wolf all weekend, and she was coming off stage like, "What did I say during that one bit?" Like, it never ends. Like, they're all you're always adding on, but be willing to go home, listen to it, and in the same way that you have a a sacred space for your creative side, there should be a sacred space for the critic. But don't ever let those two people occupy the same space. Yeah. Like, when you're creating, just create. When you're listening to it. I go to a separate part of my house, like a different mm. room, and I listen to it in there, and I'm like, okay, now in here I'm the critic. And I'm like, that didn't work. Why didn't that joke work? Is the is it only funny to me? Did I not really make the premise clear? Was it really just a shitty audience? Because, like, you're – everyone – you got to be able to kill your darlings. Everybody yeah. wants to, like, blame the audience for everything. And I'm like, if you put it up three or four times and it's not getting anything – it's probably not working because yeah. you didn't make the premise clear or it's just not a good joke. Mm-hmm. And you got to be willing to cut it and move on to the next thing. But if you're willing to do those things when you're not on stage, the quality of the product you're putting on stage will get better faster. Yeah. So that would be my yeah. advice to youngins. That's really good. Yeah. To the younglings. Take a listen, younglings. You heard it here first, everybody. Take that advice. Uh, before we get out of here, you just want to tell everybody where they can find you on the interwebs? You can find me on the interwebs at uh, Rafe Williams Comedy on Facebook. So you can find me on my own YouTube channel, R-A-F-E-W-I-L-I-A-M-S on YouTubes. I think I got two videos up right now. I'll work on that. About to be three. About to be three. So I'm still uploading right now. (laughs) Um, It's unlisted. It's unlisted. I can't give it to you because (laughs) it's, I don't know, I feel very self-conscious about it. Uh, RafeWilliams.com 
And at I am Rafe Williams on Instagram and Twitter, and I don't know. I'm on Snapchat, yeah. but I have no idea. Yeah, nobody knows their Snapchat those Guys, thank you so much for listening. You guys know where to find us because you're listening to us right now. Uh, please listen. Please like us if you like us. Uh, write a review on iTunes, whatever you like. We'd appreciate it. Thank you so much, and we will see you all soon. Bye. Just let me